So something a little bit different this week, we're going to give you a little glimpse of the iPad sculpting course for beginners, which is using Nomad Sculpt. It should be coming out any day now. And we just thought it would be nice to show you one of the chapters. There's 44 chapters across two major sections. So the first one is all about how to get going and all of the basics of learning iPad sculpting with Nomad Sculpt. And then there's an entire section devoted to just making a character from scratch. So take a look, see if you like it. And at the end of the video, we've got some information about the course itself. So in this section, we're going to look at how we can add some detail to the skin. And these are going to use stamps and what we'd call alphas. So to do that, we'll just hide all of the accessories first of all. And it would be good now to name some of these accessories. So we've got this one, which was the buckle. And as you've noticed, um, I don't normally name things until uh, they, they're not going to be merged again. So um, I generally, as I'm naming things, I do it when I know that that's finished. And it's going to be that. So, for example, I've named strap, and I've got I've got strap one and strap two. So what I'll do is I'll do multiple selection, and we'll merge those two together. Um, voxel merge again doesn't doesn't make any difference whether you use voxel or simple at this stage. Um, and from that that point now, we, we've merged together the. Um, let's just go through them one by one. So the mesh, the buckle, the. Um, Mesh isn't, isn't correct, is it? So mesh is the straps. Remember when you merge, it's going, it's going to, uh, it can destroy the name and change the names of the, the other models. So this one's the belt. So you, you might have to do this a couple of times if you are changing and merging things. But um, So that one's teeth. We're not going to merge them anymore. So they're good. Make sure we spell it right. T-E-T-H. And what have we got left? So we've got the last one, which we know now is the body. And we may merge, you know, we may do more work on that later on, but it's very doubtful now because we're coming to the end of it and we're starting to detail. Head we've got, and UV sphere, which we know is the eyes. So that's a good set of layers, not too many layers, and um, a nice sequence of, of, of all of the different, different models. So now we can hide things easily and, and show them easily. So... Let's get rid of all the clothing type things because we just want to work on the skin now. Can't get rid of the pants because that's all part of, of the model. So, and what we want to do is we want to add some surface detail and start thinking about this skin and smoothing it out. So, you, you, a lot of this, you, you already know a lot of this um, because we've worked through it bit by bit. So, for example, we could start using a ranger tool. So, there's obviously smooth. If we're feeling like the surface is anywhere is a bit too rough, then let's go in and clean that up a little bit with a combination of smooth and also with flatten. Remember, with a low, now we're into low intensity and low size as well because we don't want to do any. So if I go too aggressive with that flatten brush now, it's going to make you know it, it, it is going to damage the, the the modeling underneath. So we're being a little bit careful with that. So looking looking at it overall, I'd, I'd do a full pass of that and just go through, go go through the head and the body and just make sure that we've got it as smooth as we want it where we want it before we add any surface details and if there's any more musculature we want to add now's the time to add it or for example if this chest if we need to make the um, pectorals a little bit or the fat over the chest a bit more pronounced now would be the time to do it so just using the move tool and just carefully just pulling one bit over another bit and pulling it out the right way gives us this so it looks like it's folded under there. These are the little tweaks we would do now before we go into the surfacing. So it's a, it's a little bit of clean up really in a way. And, and I noticed the chin there needs to have like a double chin. So he has his main chin and it goes underneath for his, for his second chin there. And if you look at it from every angle, don't forget. So now's the time to, you're into refinement now. You've heavily moved into the, Let's get you know. Let's make sure all of these little areas are refined, ready to start doing the the surfacing. And we might even at this point we might think about changing the material. So before we surface detail, let's have a look. So what matte cap have we got? We could change. 
to PBR at this stage, and it might actually be a good time to talk about this. So this is the physically based rendering, and this is the one that will be affected. If you remember from the early lessons, this is the one that's affected by the HDRI or high dynamic range image. So I would suggest as you're learning, you can play with this a little bit and, and, and it's completely up to you depending on the look that you want to go for. But for us, because we've stuck with MatCap, we'll stay, we'll stay with it and we will do everything and we'll finish it with a MatCap. So you could go for a light one that's too light and too aggressive. So just pick one that's like this, like a skin one or perhaps this one or this, this pink one that we started with, one of these would be it would be a good one to, to, to get us going. So I'm going to choose that one because it looks like clay. Um, and we'll, leave it, we'll leave that for now because that, it also shows the, the surface detail. In fact, it might be better going to that one. Just seeing which is the best to show you the, the surface detail. So probably that one, actually. So it's got en enough of a range from light to dark to be able to really show the surface. So we're now ready to do the surfacing. So how do we do that? So in here, in our bottom right hand side, we've got a number of, of uh, alphas. And these are images that are stored in the Nomad um, alpha folder. And in that folder, this is where we this is where we get and where we put our images. So if you don't have these and you and you, you may well, if you're just starting, you won't have any. You'll have about five or six in here. And I've got lots of different ones, different skins and different textures. So let me just quickly show you how to make one so that you, you can at least join me in this if you don't have ours. So I'm going to switch to a program called Procreate. If you don't have this and you don't want to do this bit, then just skip to the to the next section. But but it's good for you to know this for the future. So I'm in Procreate. It's just a, a 2D drawing app. And I'm just going to start with a black. So I'm going to fill a square image with, with black completely. I'm going to go to a basic brush. So it's a standard brush, exactly as you would see in something like Photoshop. And I'm going to make myself a, what, what I'll call a skin um, brush. And this is going to look like crisscrosses. So if you have a look here, I'm just thinking about um, how skin would be um, across most of the body. So you'll, you'll get different skin on different parts of the body. So you'll see wrinkles on the hand, much smoother on the arm, you know, wrinkles on the face and around the face. But all I'm thinking about here is a generic brush to do a lot of that. And bear in mind what these brushes do is, these alphas, is wherever there's white, when I paint with it, the white will show. Wherever there's black, the, the, it won't show, and the gradient in between. So what I'm doing there is putting lots of surface detail. So I'm putting lots of whites. You can blur it if you want, just to give yourself a really clean, you know, um, a really smooth looking brush. You can just go to something like um, Gaussian blur layer and just blur it across a little bit. That's that's common in all of these 2D programs. So once you've got that one, you just export it. I'm going to use JPEG, it's either JPEG or PNG. Where are we going to put it? Well, we want to put it on the iPad. So let's go to Files. So save. Um, Save to files. Where do we save it? We're going to first of all, we're going to name it and we're going to call it skin. And this is where you save it. So you save it on your iPad in Nomad under alphas and you save it there. Now, when you reboot um, your Nomad, that will appear as a skin alpha in here. So you can go to go navigate to it and pick it. And I've got lots of different examples, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. That is how we would create our own alpha. So I'll just use any one at the moment. I'm not even going to use that one. And I'm going to start painting uh, with just the, the, the alpha. We're not painting colour yet. We're just, we're just looking, focusing on skin. So we'll go to the belly. We'll go to the clay brush. And we'll basically zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to do it wrong in the first instance, and then you can see what, what's happening. So, and I'm just in case, just to show you, I'm going to go with a real big red colour because it's nothing to do with colour. So let me just show you what happens when I paint with that. So you can see there what's happened. So because I changed things, the alpha disappeared. Because I changed the tool, the alpha is dependent on which tool you're on. So what you have to do is choose your tool first. So clay, then your alpha. And because the color is coming through, the color is coming through, and the reason that that's coming through is because color is enabled here. So if you turn that off, just 
make sure this checkbox is off. And another way of doing it is up here, the second, a third icon in at the top uh, from the right of this, this part, and it's turned off here. So now what will happen is we're going to use this alpha down here with no color, and you'll see what happens. And that now just affects the surface. So I'll undo all of that to make it clear to, to you what I'm doing. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to just be able to paint the surface. So, And that'll depend on whether I want a large. So if I want a large brush, go different ways. If I want a small brush, low intensity. And then I can just do like this. And it's very subtle. You might not be able to see it, but this is how we get our skin built up, the, the, the roughness and the, the wrinkles in the skin. And you can do a full pass of wrinkles with this. This is one way to do it, to, to, to get that surface detail. Now, later on, when we talk about painting, you can switch this on with the painting. So you could be sculpting and painting at the same time. And don't forget, this is adding to the surface based on the white colour. But if you use this button over here on the right, the sub, it'll now indent it. So watch the difference. You can see now what's happening there. It's giving you an indented skin. So if you were doing the hands, the back of the hands, that might be the way you do it. Because crisscross in there will give you the crisscross skin that you would want on your hands. So be very, very careful and very subtle. Bear in mind you don't want it on the trousers because that's cloth. But you can just use the brush in circular motions. And this is only one brush, remember. You could, you could basically make hundreds of these based on the surface type that you want. So if you were doing bark, it would be one time. If you were doing rocks, it would be another. And you could make little sets or even download. If you don't want to make them yourself, you can just find them on the internet. As long as it's a black and white image, generally uh, JPEGs and, and PNGs, as I've already mentioned, that, that's a, a great you know, way to grab them um, that other people have made and add them to your collection. Okay, so we'll do the same on the face. Now, the face, you'd probably want something a bit different up here. You'd probably want something that looks a bit more like pores. So what that would mean is going back and making something that's quite dotty. So let's have a look at that close up. You can see there, it gives you, change the sub, and you can see how it's a bit more um, sh sh showing the, the pores or the, or, the, or the pimples or wh whatever you decide that you need for that particular part of, of, of the model. OK, so there's a couple of them explored and we're getting a nice texture all over his body. We're using symmetry because we're still symmetrical at the moment. So let's just make sure we're on the right model. OK, so that's a good way to get through most of the surface texturing like that. But there's another thing we need to look at, which is over here called the stamp. So it's almost the same, but it's got more settings. So up here with your uh, clay brush, you have got some the ability to change some of the um, the curves, and that would mean it would affect the surface differently. But what I always try to encourage people to do is switch to the uh, stamp tool. And that's because if you affect the clay brush, you're gonna have to change them back. Um, so leave your clay brush alone and use the stamp tool, which is this one. What does the stamp tool give us? So it's exactly the same in terms of it's how it's gonna affect the surface, but you're dragging it on the surface. So we'll use a different type of brush. Let's just pick something else. Again, if you want, go and draw some of these yourself. And look how aggressive that is. Now that looks pretty cool if you wanted to make little tiny mountains on somebody's elbow, but that's not what we're after. We do want that effect, but we want it really subtle. So we want to knock that intensity right down. Go up here to the alpha. And you could click custom and change the graph. So the graph is how high it would come up off the surface, really. But we'll just do double cl double click here. And what we'll do is we'll use custom and bring this right down and bring these two up. So it's a nice flat profile. So let's just see what that's done for us. And you can see there it's given us exactly what we want, which is a nice rocky kind of rough skin. Um, and it's predictable because you're dragging it on so you know exactly where you want to put it. Let's just try it on the back of his head a little bit. This is a good place to do it. So you can see there it's given us a nice, you know, it could be bone, it could be bark, it could be what, whatever you decide. And don't forget you could sub it and you get the opposite, which gives you a nice, this is good for things like concrete and stone, if you make some nice stone alphas. 
it's super easy to make them and I definitely would encourage you to make your own because you'll learn what works well for you and you don't get what we would what 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 we see in the industry a lot is very predictable shapes coming on to, coming out with models and that means that people have just used alphas that that have been around for quite some time so try and be original try and make your own try and find your own textures find photographs that you can bring the textures off that's a, a great great thing to do but that's pretty much how we would do skin and how we would use either of the two methods either one of the brushes so clay would do it brush would do it um move obviously doesn't because that's moving the surface if you try use the move tool with an alpha brush on look, watch what happens so do it on the arm here to show you you can see what's happening there now you can get cool effects because it's using the alpha to drive what can be moved and what can't be moved. So you can get some crazy dragon effects and ice and fire, all sorts of crazy effects. But we're not after that. So I would encourage you not to use those kind of tools. So stick with the stamp tool for dragging onto the surface for, mo for most of your, or, or this kind of work. I'm really excited to be able to tell you about a new iPad sculpting course that we're just coming to the end of creating. It's all about Nomad Sculpt and it will get you going with iPad sculpting even if you've never sculpted in the past ever. Let me just tell you a little bit about the course and the kind of things that you're going to find in there. We've broken the first section down into five easy sections over five hours. And the first one is just get sculpting. So this is where we get a quick overview of the interface, talk about left and right handedness, and then on to the navigation basics. The second chapter is all about the interface and it's the largest section. So it covers all of the interface panel, all of the things like display settings, layers, pressure, symmetry, painting basics, and all about the left and right side and where everything's found on the interface. It finishes with a description of all the brushes and that's probably the largest section and where you're really going to have to dig down deep to understand a large a chunk of brushes with lots of different uses. Then in section three, we dive straight into the sculpting again. So this time a little bit more in depth with how we would use the most common brushes, the basics of remeshing, dynamic topology, and how to use primitives. Section four gives us everything we need to know about masking and why we need masking and the brush settings for the masking and how to extract geometry off another piece of geometry, which is one of the most useful things. The final section is painting and materials and we look at how to add colour, how to use alphas and how to use stamps to make your surfaces of your models and creatures and characters look exciting. So once you've got through that five hours of core training and you've practiced and practiced and you know most of the tools and where they are and what they do, it's then time to take a look at making an actual character. So we're going to choose a little monster and we're going to work through everything from how to begin with references and then how to use things like um, primitives to block out the character and then how to break that scene down with all of the things you've learned in the first five chapters. If all that sounds exciting to you, then take a look in the description down below and have a look at how to get on our mailing list to make sure you're notified when the course is uploaded. We're very close to finishing it now. We've just got one or two things that we want to add to make it perfect. And then we're gonna be able to give you what we've promised over the last few months, which is a full instructive tutorial on how to use Nomad Sculpt on the iPad and get those creatures and characters and monsters that you've always wanted to get made and make sure you're trained to do it.